and you want to invite that individual to a disciplinary hearing to um, potentially ask some final questions of the individual or individuals involved um, and mainly clarify, mainly confirm. So you are, you, what you're doing is you are saying to the individual, so on such and such, you did this, can you confirm? Such and such, you did this, can you confirm? And then you, 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 you most probably then relaying back company policy to them to check that they're clear on the company policies around things, that they're clear on the rules, the training that they've potentially had around certain, certain aspects of things. Um, and all of those clarifications that you want to just get clear to make sure that, you, um, that they understand your expectation of them and that, and that you understand um, what, they, what they understood to be you know, um, information that they should have had. Um, a disciplinary hearing needs to be carried out by a, a different manager. So manager one um, would always be less senior than manager two. So manager two is always more, uh, probably one step senior. If that isn't possible, if you don't have access at that time to a more senior individual, it needs to be someone at least equivalent. It can never be, you know, you could never have um, a director carrying out um, investigations and then a supervisor carrying out um, the, the hearing. It's always, the notion is that actually you're taking it to hearing level, it's, it's, one, it's one step further in that, situ in, that, in that case and it needs to be a more senior manager. So that, was, that always needs to be someone that's impartial um, and they're presented with the case notes, so they're presented with the investigation notes, the notes that you've been making during the investigations, and they get to read up on all the evidence um, prior to their disciplinary hearing. Yeah. That way, there's no preempted outcome. They're not going into that meeting with, oh yeah, well this says this, but their manager says, they're all right, you know, they're fine, they're all right, yeah, they knew what they were doing, but it's fine. Um, and, and that can happen, particularly when things come down to health and safety and stuff like that. It's kind of, oh no, he's my friend. I know he wasn't wearing his safety shoes, but it's all right. He's, not, he's always really careful. Things like that. So the idea is that this is somebody completely different, impartial, had no connection or discussion with line manager one so that there's no preempted outcome. Because if there is, it's an unfair process. And if you were to dismiss, it's unfair dismissal. So... Um, you then adjourn, and that's really important. Adjourning in a hearing to consider your outcome is really, really vital, and it's it's something that you that shouldn't be taken lightly. Um, sometimes adjournments can last for ten minutes, and the outcome is that it's dismissal. Well, if I had done something wrong, I would like to think that the the, the information gathered and the decision had been taken with lots and lots of well thought um, information in front of them and wouldn't have been taken within sort of a 10 minute gap. I think it's really important that particularly when you are um, dealing with, also potentially you could be dealing with someone with 20 years service and if you take five minutes to adjourn to consider the outcome that you're going to dismiss them and break that 20 years service, yeah. um, that could also be an unfair process. It could be argued that you've not taken, you've not well thought that, that decision at all. So I'd always suggest to take your time when adjourning. And even if the manager that you're assisting is, wants to wrap it up quickly, I haven't got time for this, I've got another meeting in an hour, well then we, we, we adjourn for a day. We adjourn until tomorrow and we reconvene tomorrow. Um, I, I mean, I, I, Obviously, I'm placing quite a lot of pressure on it, but I would say, again, it depends on the case that you're dealing with. So if you're dealing with something that's really serious, I'd probably take a bit more time to adjourn and think about, think about the outcome. Um, really go over all the evidence, go over the fresh information that you might have from the disciplinary hearing, um, and really make sure that you, you're thorough and you're clear. If it's something that's um, quite simple, maybe like absence, or, you know, Bob didn't get his targets to his boss on the Monday. I mean, that, that can be something that's, you know, not, not, doesn't need to be too lengthy. You've got the information you need. Um, and if, if you did adjourn for, for 15, 20 minutes and you invited them back after that and sort of said, the information that we've got is clear, we, we haven't needed to, you know, we haven't needed to spend a great amount of time going through all of this again because it's really clear you've given us some really factual information, you've given us some thorough information and we've got other information as well 
and actually our decision is this. Um, but certainly don't make, when it's something more serious, don't make a snap decision or certainly don't make it seem like you've made a snap decision because yeah. um, that can put you in a bit of muddy water. Sometimes you might need to go from here back up to here because if you, if you then have another hearing with the individual or individuals that you're, that you, that you, you, you're hearing um, the disciplinary for, um, you might be presented with some fresh information something that they've withheld, something that they've not confirmed um, earlier on. Uh, they, they could then decide, to, once they know it's got a bit more serious, they could then decide to say, it wasn't just me, Jack and John, it was such and such, such and such as well. Um, and that's where, you, that's where, unfortunately, you need to go back again and start investigating again. But that would be this manager would need to go back and do that investigation. So then it gets a bit more complicated because then when you hear her again, it's got to be a different manager. So, but these are all the, the more complex cases. Yeah. And if you, if you, I'd always say with the more complex cases, always seek legal advice if you can. If you're not sure, if you, you know, if, you, if you're not sure, and ACAT is there to support you as well as employees, but also if you've got any legal representatives on site or, or that you work with, it's always worth probably checking with them what the, what the process should be.